Now we're going to talk about how procedures or function calls are handled in MIPS. So procedure calls are really important for structured programming. They allow you to avoid repeated code and they allow you to call functions you didn't write, such as libraries. So let's take a look at an example up here. Here I have some code of a equals zero, I do something to calculate b, and otherwise I do something to calculate c. Now if you look at this code here, you see this is the exact same function, just with different inputs twice. So instead of writing the same function twice, what I want to be able to do is just write a function call. So in this case I'm going to call this update, and what is update going to do? Well, it'll take these two inputs and it will calculate this function. Now how does this work? Well, when I get to this line of code, I'm going to go off and find update. I'm going to go process update. When update is done, it's going to return the value. The value is going to get stored in B. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to continue running after this line. If I get to this update down here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to jump off to update, then I'm going to return to the right place here. So you'll notice that depending on which update I call, I use different inputs and I return to a different place. So update has to know where to return to and we've got to make sure we know which inputs to use. So in order to do function calls, we need to be able to put the input data or the arguments where the procedure, where the procedure can access it. We need to start the procedure as we need to jump to the procedure. We need to do the calculation. We need to put the results where the caller, that is the function that called it, can access it. And then finally, we need to return to the right place. So if we're called update from here, we need to return to after this instruction. And if we call update from here, we need to return to after this instruction. So let's take a look at how we do that. So the terminology for this is important to get straight so we know what we're talking about. So the caller calls the procedure. So here main is our caller, and I'm going to call her red in the slides here. So the caller is main. Then the procedure is the thing that's called. It's the callee, which we're going to color here orange. So here we have the callee. So the caller is calling the callee. Now we've got arguments. This is how the caller gives the callee information. So here are the arguments, G and H. And then within the procedure itself, or the callee, you have the arguments as well. So these will be colored blue in the slides. Then the callee returns the result, or the data back to the caller. Here you can see it returning it. And finally, the caller gets it back, and this is green. So we have a caller, which is calling the callee. It gives it arguments and it returns the results. Now how do we actually do the procedure call? So to do the procedure call we need to be able to do two things. We need to transfer the control to the callee to start the procedure. That's sort of like a jump or a branch. And then when we're done we need to return to the caller. Again like a jump or branch, but this jump or branch depends on where you were called from. So somehow we need to remember who called us so we know where to go back to. The way we do this is with the jump and link command. So here's the instruction, jump and link, and then the address. And what this does, it keeps track of the instruction after it, so that when we're done, we can go back to where we started from. So it restores the, it stores the return address, that is it stores PC plus four in register 31, which has the abbreviation RA for return address. Now when we're done, to go back, we call jump return register address, RA and this will jump us back to the address in RA. This is why we need to store this value so we can get back. So let's take a look at an example here. Here we've got a program, we've got add it, we're going to do some addition, we're going to jump to a procedure, do some more addition, when we get back, the procedure is going to do an addition and then it's going to jump back. So let's take a look at how this executes. So we execute our first instruction and we go ahead and update our register file. Then we get to jump and link to my procedure. Now this is going to cause us to jump down here but it's also going to store the next PC. So here we're on program, we're on instruction eight, and it's going to store that plus four, so 12, into register 31. Now we go down to the procedure. We're going to start executing it. We're going to do our addition here, update register two. We get to jump register, and there should be an RA in here, specify which register, R31. And now we're going to take the value here, 12, which we stored before, and we're going to use that to jump back. So now we're going to jump back here to the instruction right after we called the procedure. So now we jump to this instruction and we do our final calculation. So when we call jump and link, it's going to store the instruction after the one we're currently at in register 31. And when we call jump return with the register, it's going to jump back to the right place. So question, is the code below correct? 
Well, the answer is no. So when we call jump and link up here, it's already storing the address of the next instruction. So in the procedure, we don't need to go in here and add four to it. If we did that, we'd end up going two instructions over when we got back, which would probably cause the program to crash.